You're listening to Family Talk, the radio broadcasting division of the James Dobson Family Institute. I am that James Dobson, and I'm so pleased that you've joined us today. Thank you for joining us today for another edition of Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. I'm Roger Marsh. On today's program, you're going to hear a popular and important conversation between Dr. Dobson and author, speaker, and radio and TV host Mark Levin. This program was recorded in September of 2021, so you'll be hearing Dr. Dobson and Mark Levin discussing some of the hot-button news events from this past summer. Now, before we get started, though, I have an important question for you. During this Christmas season, will you consider giving a gift that will make a difference in the lives of families all across the nation? Well, that's what happens when you give to Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk and the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute. Thanks to some generous friends of our ministry, every donation that is made to the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute during the month of December will be doubled. So your $50 gift becomes $100, your $1,000 gift becomes $2,000, and so on. Go to drjamesdobson.org for more information on how to make your donation today to strengthen families all across the country. That's drjamesdobson.org or call us at 877-732-6825. Here now to introduce his guest is Dr. James Dobson on today's very special edition of Family Talk. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Family Talk. I'm your host, Dr. James Dobson, and I am so pleased that you've joined us for this particular show. I think today's program could be one of the most important that we've aired in many years. What makes it so significant is driven by what's happening in America and the world at this time. We live in a far more dangerous place than even a month ago and we desperately need to understand the times in which we live. My guest today is going to help us address that concern. He's Mark Levin. He holds a Juris Doctorate from Temple University School of Law, but most of our listeners know and follow him on numerous media venues. He's seen every week on Fox News, which carries his show Life, Liberty, and Levin, I try never to miss that show if I, unless I absolutely have to. He's a best-selling author and has a nationally syndicated radio program, The Mark Levin Show, which is one of the most listened to programs on conservative talk radio, uh, perhaps the most listened to. If you follow him, you know that uh, Mark makes us think. And now he's given us even more to think about by writing his New York Times bestselling book, American Marxism. It is a must read, to be sure. And we're going to talk about that remarkable publication today. Mark, it's an honor. It's an honor to have you with us again. Well, you know, Dr. Dobson, trust me, the honor is all mine. And uh, as I told you off air, and I want your audience to know how crucially important you've been to this country in my life, throughout your career, and I want to thank you for everything you do and everything you've done. Well, uh, I heard recently that your new book, American Marxism, has sold more than 600,000 copies in a short period of time. It's probably more than that. How many has it sold now? As of today, over 900,000. Unbelievable. That's what we call a runaway bestseller. How do you account for that overwhelming response? Well, Dr. Dobson, I think the uh, American people, uh, maybe not all of us, but most of us, love this country. And they love the founding of this country. And they love the Declaration and the Constitution. And they love the idea of the nuclear family. And they love their faith they understand that these are all under attack and they're all under attack in a thousand different ways. Uh, what used to be commonsensical, what used to be viewed as basic morality, what used to be viewed as uh, a love of country and so forth has all been turned inside out. Uh, the government has embraced these radical ideologies and they're trying to impose their views on us 
and even our children, kindergarten, elementary school, uh, the colleges and campuses are a runaway disaster. The borders are wide open intentionally to change the nature of the country. Um, there, there's a war on capitalism, which is this degrowth movement, and on and on and on. And people are frustrated. They're not sure what to do. Um, and what I've tried to do in this book is to take a very sober look of what's behind all this, these various movements, these ideologies, and how they've been customized, if you will, and applied to American society. And uh, I spend a great deal of the book discussing this. And then at the very end of the book, I discuss some of the things, not all the things, but some of the things we should absolutely do to take it on. And I think people are looking for answers, practical, hands-on, common sense answers to try and get their country back. So I think Hmm. that is why it's the most important book I've ever written. It is a a bare-knuckles explanation in plain English, although you got to have your thinking cap on, on what's going on in this country. You know, Mark, I left uh, academia. I was at USC School of Medicine, and I left there because I saw coming what we're experiencing now. And uh, I, at that time, ached for somebody to write it, to say it, and uh, you have done it uh, in all your books, but particularly this one. I just really hope that many more people will be aware of it and have their eyes opened as to what's taking place. We're about to lose everything we care about, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, we are losing our country. The question is whether we are going to claw our way back. They have succeeded in devouring most of our institutions and the culture. The media utterly corrupt. Academia is utterly corrupt. And then they protect themselves. They use our Constitution to protect themselves while they're destroying the Constitution. Uh, they use free speech, academic freedom, and tenure to protect themselves while they're destroying academic freedom and free speech. And uh, this this is a daunting task. It's very complex. And so what I try to do is take it piece by piece. And I try to explain to people who have never been involved in anything before, look, I'm not asking you to put your life on the line. I'm not asking you to change your life in any significant way. But we need your help. Uh, it's not enough to complain among ourselves uh, over a Sunday night dinner or uh, some social event and then think that's actually accomplished something. Our enemies, and I don't call them adversaries in the opposition, these are our enemies. Our enemies are absolutely ruthless, and they mean what they say. Listen to what they say and understand what they're doing. And they are busy from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to bed, if they ever go to bed, 24-7, trying to figure out how to take down this country. And they're succeeding. How did they pull us off? How did they go from being in the, the pretty dramatic minority, uh, radical-sounding words that didn't really resonate with the American people and the people of the world? How did they come to a position of dominance like they have today? Because the majority is, is not in revolution mode. The majority is relatively satisfied with what's going on in our country, Um, but they use propaganda, they use pseudo events, they use pressure tactics, they use violence, they use uh, whatever is available to them because they're mostly thugs. And most of the people in the majority are passive or they acquiesce to this. They're busy, obviously, raising their families, uh, making a living, law-abiding, people of faith, and uh, And too many of us are naive. But when you look at the world and you look at the history of mankind, it's filled with evil. It's filled with with totalitarian societies of one form or another. We are an exception. There's only been a few exceptions. And those exceptions before us didn't last. They fell. And so, you know, as Reagan said, as others have said, this, this country cannot live in perpetuity as a free country unless we, the people, are resolute on, in ensuring that it will. I mean, we must vote, but that's not enough. We need to look at our neighborhoods, our school systems, 
Think about where we're sending our kids to college. Uh, we can't just pretend that these corporations that have turned on us, that we should continue to keep uh, supporting them with enormous sums of money. We have these evil forces to blame, but we also have many of us to blame because we're not doing what needs to be done to sustain the society. You know, the name American Marxism implies that this originated with a man, Karl Marx. I'm reading an article now written by Thomas Sowell that is really outstanding. It talks about his upbringing in his early years and his early writings. Uh, to what degree has he influenced what's taking place today? All these great thinkers of liberty and humanity have influenced me. Uh, I stand on the shoulders of people like Thomas Sowell. You know, I've read Aristotle and Cicero and, and Adam Smith and Thomas Aquinas and anybody I can get my hands on. It seems to me that it's our responsibility to digest this information. I don't expect everybody to do the same thing, quit their jobs and do X, Y, Z, but there are things we can do just from our computers uh, and uh, in talking to our neighbors in the way we raise our children in what the children, our children read and what they take to colleges and universities. But there's things we got to do that we've got to engage in. You see it happening here and there, uh, Dr. Dobson, that it needs to happen on a more widespread national basis. And it would be nice if we could network uh, one community to the next, as the hard left does, and share our ideas and so forth, because we have to push back. Talk about the state university system. What is going on there? Many people have kind of a vague notion of what happens there, and yet they send their kids there. Yep. What, uh, what is your take on it? You know, people want to, and most, a lot of them, want to send their kids to Ivy League schools. They want to go to Princeton or Yale or Harvard or Columbia or Stanford and so forth. These are the worst indoctrination mills in our country. And uh, people think they're sending them to these schools, so they come out with these great degrees and they get a great job. Well, they come out with more than that. And this is one of the reasons we have executives in our corporations now and in our boards of directors who are, as they call them, woke, um, which is an awfully passive term, but I guess that's the term we got to use these days. Uh, and I wrote another book about this called The Plunder and Deceit, and I go in deeply into how these professors are chosen. What happens is the faculty chooses the faculty, and the faculty chooses the deans. And so you find in 70% of these Ivy League schools, they choose among themselves. And the next crop of uh, professors come out of the same system. It's very incestuous. That's why you see very few truly outspoken religious or conservative professors. And if you have them, usually they're beaten down and often kicked out. Um, are afraid to say what they feel they need to say. So academic freedom is largely dead on our college campuses. The problem is you and I and everybody listening are paying for this, even these private colleges, mostly in state taxes, but also in federal grant programs and so forth, to subsidize our demise. And what I say in the book is, why are we doing this? Particularly in Republican states with Republican legislatures and governors. We should be what I call, what they call, BDSing these institutions. You know, where the anti-Semites mm -hmm. use BDS against Israel to choke them off economically to try and destroy that country. Well, we should use those BDS tactics against our colleges and universities and other institutions. Boycott, divest, and sanction. Slash their budgets. Would you, as a dad, send your son or daughter to a state university I would do my best to send my son and daughter to a university that's not going to turn out a Marxist or a revolutionary or somebody who just flat out hates their country. And so you need to be informed yourselves as parents on where you want to send your kid. Um, and you need to stand up to your kid if they want to go somewhere else and at least talk to them and try and persuade them. You know, we can infiltrate these classrooms, too. We can have our kids bring certain texts and books and ask the professors why they're not, why they're not used. 
And in addition to clawing back funding in these these uh, institutions through the states, I say parents ought to get together, and if their kid in philosophy is being taught, you know, how to be a Maoist, they should go to the administration and demand their tuition back. And if they can't get their tuition back, they should hire one of these or or enlist one of these conservative legal foundations or others and sue them and bring a whole lot of lawsuits and be litigious, just like the left is. Use some of the tactics that they use. These classrooms do not belong to them. We have ceded them to the enemy. You know, um, I think the thing that disturbs me most of what's ha- about what's happening today is the way uh, Marxism and those principles has penetrated the public schools. And it starts in kindergarten in its own way. And then it moves year by year in through the secondary education and the high school curricula. And its proponents accomplish that sweeping change. How in the world can we wrest that away from those who are indoctrinating our kids and twisting and warping them from an early tender age? not easy. There's a lot of things people can do. First of all, um, you can homeschool your kids if you're able to. A lot of people work and they're not able to. Secondly, that's growing, by the way, dramatically. That's growing and it should, even if you can't. Now, neighborhoods are coming together with parents who are homeschooling, say, two or three or four kids at a time. Uh, And you you have parents who may not be uh, public school teachers, but are professionals and have very good backgrounds in a whole variety of areas, or parents who aren't professionals, but are quite capable of reading the the curricula that the kids need to be taught. And that is growing. I read something in 1973, some small number of parents were homeschooling. And then I read that last year, 5 million households were involved in homeschooling. This is actually a very good thing. You also have alternatives that we ought to push for. When I was president of Landmark Legal Foundation, we paved the way for school choice. School choice is something President Trump embraced. We need to push hard wherever we can for school choice. I agree. This is a civil rights issue, particularly in our inner cities. But wherever we can have it, we should have it. Options to government-run schools. There's other things we can do. For instance, and some groups are doing it now. Under the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, we have what's called the Equal Protection Clause. Well, if you're teaching children that they're inferior because of their race, and if you're teaching other children to hate other children because of their race, a very strong argument be made that that violates the federal Constitution and the Civil War Amendments, including the 14th Amendment and the Equal Protection Clause. As I say, we need to learn how to become litigious, too. Uh, There's other things we can do. The teachers union, the NEA and the AFT, they are given special tax status by the Internal Revenue Service. They're not supposed to use union dues for politics. I was told by somebody the AFT has in their tax return, which is publicly available, which is supposed to be on their website, but you can always get it by writing them and writing the IRS. As a matter of law, they have to provide their their tax returns. I was told the AFT said they spent nothing on politics. All right, they lied. Obviously, they spent a lot of money on politics. So let's say you're a local parent. You can collect news articles on what they're doing. You can can go to school board meetings and ask them, and you can put together a complaint. And it's very easy to do. Again, Dr. Dobbs, and I have it in the back of the book. You can link it right up to the IRS on how to file a complaint against these teacher unions. Imagine in a school district. If 100 parents filed 100 complaints against the union, they would have to respond to this. You can use the Freedom of Information Act against, and states have them, against any school district, against any school system, demand documents, copies of their contracts. You want to know how teachers are hired. You want to know how teachers are promoted. We must do everything we can to protect the younger generation because that's the future of the country. One of my most uh, oft-quoted concerns uh, came from Adolf Hitler, of all people. In 1937, he was uh, commenting on the fact that there was opposition to him in the culture. And he's quoted as saying, it does not matter what the people think. We've got their kids. And that's just what keeps me awake at night is they've got Mm -hmm. our kids. 
and I've been, you know, beating the drum for parents to step in and defend those youngsters who are too young and gullible to question what they're being told. We've got to fight for the kids. And if we don't, we've lost not only the kids, we've lost everything. We've already lost essentially one generation uh, that uh, has uh, departed from what their parents believed and, and thought. And now we're about to lose the second one, and we must not do it. And you're right. And when you go back to Karl Marx and Engels, um, this is what they talk about. This is you've got to destroy the social structure. You've got to destroy the society. You've got to destroy the nuclear family. And you've got to destroy and control the educational system. Mark, I left the university because of this very concern that that I saw the family was in the bullseye. And this was 1977, and I began uh, warning about what I was seeing coming. I don't want to sound like Father Time here but or that I was some kind of prophet, but if you watched the culture and what was happening, you could see where they wanted to take it. And I had a lot of opposition from within the church and within... Uh, the Christian community saying, we're not political, you're too political. They didn't seem to get it. Now, many of them are saying to me, I heard you, I didn't believe it, but I do now. Well, you know, Dr. Dobson, you know this better than I. We have very radical liberal elements within these various religious institutions, whether it's Christianity, whether it's Judaism, they have politicized faith, where the real faith is the politics of the left. It's not the Bible. And yeah. I see this all the time. It's frustrating as can be. Uh, I'll drive down the road, and I'll see sermon on Black Lives Matter this Sunday, and so forth and so on. Again, we have free will in this country, and people should embrace uh, houses of worship that inform their the moral views, their ethical views, their views of family, and not just go through the cycle of these institutions because they say, oh, look at this, this is a Christian place, this is a Jewish, it doesn't matter. Uh, you got to pick your, your houses of worship very, very carefully, your pastors, your ministers, your rabbis, and so forth and so on, you got to pick them very, very carefully. I have now, and it makes a huge difference in your life, of course. I'm trying to persuade the people who haven't made up their minds or who are confused. People yeah. who are out to destroy my country and destroy my liberty, destroy future generations, I'm not out to persuade them. I'm out to defeat them. Mark, let's close this program with a quote that you included. In fact, it's the end of your first chapter of American Marxism. And you quoted Ronald Reagan. I worked with him for five years, and he was a, an icon for me. And this is a quote from him. He said, and many people have heard this, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. Thank you so much for being with us and for all that you do, and especially for writing this uh, incredible book, American Marxism. My great pleasure. Thank you, sir. Well, that was Dr. James Dobson with his friend and our guest on today's broadcast, Mark Levin. They discussed some of the topics in Mark's most recent best-selling book called American Marxism. America is a unique place. It was built upon Judeo-Christian values and biblical principles that have allowed it to thrive to this day. But now the tides are changing and threats to liberty and freedom are common and even celebrated. Today's broadcast was another installment in our 2021 Best of Broadcast series. 
Throughout the entire month of December, we are sharing some of the most popular Family Talk programs from the past year with you. Now, if you happen to miss any of the broadcasts this month, we've got you covered. You can request your own copy of Family Talk's 2021 Best of CD Set for a suggested donation of $50. Just visit drjamesdobson.org forward slash best of 2021. That's drjamesdobson.org forward slash best of 2021. And by the way, you can also request your copy by calling us at 877-732-6825. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We hope you'll join us again next time for another edition of Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute.